Тема моей лекции сегодня – это основные факты о вирусе папилломы. The basic factors of HPV and its role in human cancers. Well, you have listened to a number of presentations already, and some of the things have become clear. Uh, but still, there are some new uh, things that I would like to adapt. Uh, so, but I'll connect what I'm saying with what you have already uh, been listening to. HPV. Uh, that's a an, um, uh, 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 covalent virus, a DS, uh, DNA virus, <coughs> uh, with uh, eight uh, uh, eight thousand uh, pairs, and it belongs to a large family of uh, Papillomavirida family, uh, uh, Papillomaviruses. On the whole, uh, it consists of uh, 16 uh, genders, and uh, the gender specificity based on the uh, identity of uh, L L1, which codes the capsule protein. So, uh, in this virus, there are three regions: uh, early uh, green field, the green arrows with E, late blue ones uh, and uh, upstream uh, it's uh, these are the regions between l1 uh, and uh, esx with ori dot so they are responsible for different functions associated with transmission with the connection of cell with the uh, transport and development and so on and so forth so what is important here it is important that the papilloma virus has very strict tropism uh, tropism to the host and the tissues so as a rule we do not see the uh, crossing between the uh, uh, different types uh, here uh, uh, people and uh, um, animals and the tropism is also associated with the following. This virus can um, damage the uh, mucus um, uh, tissues and uh, um, skins, cutaneous groups. So uh, another very important factor is as follows. The HPV is practically everywhere and uh, mostly transmitted sexually. And um, uh, most of the people are uh, HPV infected after the start of sexual life. Over our life, everyone who is present here has been or is, uh, still is, or is newly infected with VPG. It's a fact that we just have to accept what's good. Most of these infections are transient, so within uh, six to 24 months, they disappear. This virus infection disappears with the majority of these people who are infected. And there is a feedback between the elimination of the virus uh, infection and its duration. To the right, you can see the data for the spread of uh, uh, HIV in different regions in, in different regions of the world, and in, right in the middle, in red, uh, it's the incidence um, on the average uh, in the cervical uh, uh, tube of uh, women with with uh, absolutely normal cervical uh, picture. How many uh, HPVs there are in the world? We know that there are many of them. And uh, today uh, of April this year, from the Reference Center for HPV, which is uh, located at the K uh, Karolinsky Institute, there are, they indicate that there are 226 genotypes. And actually, there is data that there might be up to 360 uh, types. So they're not cloned, and they're not uh, um, known as types yet. And so the final number for today is 220 uh, uh, HPV genotypes. To the right, you can see uh, the um, uh, uh, phylogenic uh, tr uh, tree of uh, VPG, uh, HPV today. Most of them are uh, uh, cutaneous type. As for alpha types, uh, among which there are oncogenic types, so which uh, uh, cause cancer in people. There are about 60 of those. Now, for today, the trend is as follows. Practically all the new types that are registered, uh, these types belong to the uh, uh, gamma. Um, VPG. Only one is new, and it was discovered in 1991, and there were no new types of uh, this group discovered. Alpha, beta, gamma, mu, and nu. These are the five groups. 
uh, what are the most prevalent uh, types in the world? There was a very good article uh, concerning that, uh, that analyzed the data for women uh, with normal cytological picture. Uh, over a million uh, women from uh, five continents were um, examined. And it was an article, it was a survey, a review of different types of research carried out. And it was the incidence is quite uh, high and it varies from uh, region to region. But on the whole, uh, and, and HPV 16, 18, 31, 52, and 58 uh, prevail in most of the regions of the world. Uh, as for the agency for uh, cancer studies, uh, you can see the data for uh, 2012. They uh, speak about 13 major types, and nine are covered by the um, present-day vaccines. Uh, there is uh, three valence uh, um, and, two, uh, and one uh, quadrivalent, and all the types are covered by the nine-valent vaccine. As for HPV, it has been approved. It's a factor that uh, leads to different types of cancers with people. To 100%, it is responsible for cervical cancer, as anal uh, uh, cancer, 88%. Uh, that's what we see here. But the latest data is over 90%. Uh, that's the anal. Mm. Uh, cancer. It's also responsible for a large uh, share of the uh, vagina cancers, about 20% vulva and about 10% of penis, and no less than 30% oropharyngeal uh, cancer and uh, other uh, organs. Pathogenesis of uh, HPV uh, infection starts with the following. As a result of a certain micro um, uh, injury, the infection, the virus, gets into the mucus layer and into the basal part of it. And there it can stay there um, in this sort of a silent phase for years and for decades. Or it can start producing the infection. This persistence, this is a clear word, it's persistent. Um, because um, the, if you discover HPV, it does not mean that a man or a woman is going to develop cancer. But uh, the uh, infection is persistent and the you know, genetic uh, changes uh, get accumulated, and as a result, this must lead uh, to a cancer. And uh, it is possible to get rid of the infection if there is an immune response of the body, of the system. Briefly, you can represent it like that with this diagram. Down below, these four squares, that is the normal cervix. Then, then there is the um, HPV infection, um, which is um, um, sleeping, and it can progress till pre-cancer status. And at this stage, everything can go back to the normal. But once the pre-cancer state progresses, the invasion uh, process starts, and then um, cancer develops. And it's very important that we are talking about the cervical uh, cancer at the moment, because this uh, cancer, as I have said, it's a big global problem, because 100 percent of cervical cancer is associated with HPV, over uh, 500,000 new cases annually, and half of these are um, um, mortality cases. So it's a global problem, and that is why there are so many studies dedicated to cervical cancer. Here you can see the incidence uh, picture and mortality uh, picture. This is mortality actually with uh, look at the three regions uh, subequatorial Africa Latin America and uh, East Europe Eastern uh, East Europe and Russian Federation is part of that Alexei Mikhailovich has already described the situation with us and uh, his that's um, um, uh, 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 a very well expressed problem with us as well so um, uh, the fact that um, HPV is a, a, a cause of uh, cervical cancer, and that means the diagnostics of uh, um, H, uh, HPV uh, can uh, help with diagnostics with women and makes will lead to preventive measures that will help to detect pre-cancer status and then prevent uh, the 
um, cancer development. This has been demonstrated in many studies. One was published in 2014, and I took part in that research. This sweet screen. We analyzed the data for 12,000 women tested cytologically uh, 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 and pet cell diagnostics. And in principle, it was demonstrated. Now, if you look at the diagram, the lower part, uh, the dotted line, that is the uh, these are the women uh, who were um, HPV negative over the whole period of time. And the upper line, uh, the green line, these are the women who had um, uh, negative cytological results. And uh, this is one of the uh, studies. There were other studies as well, uh, more extensive, usually in the European countries and in the United States and California, for example. So summing up all of this, summing up all the data accumulated, uh, the uh, WHO, uh, suggested uh, the three-stage preventive, pre pre preventive program. Uh, the first primary prevention is vaccination against HPV for girls of 9 to 14 years of age, um, and uh, uh, preferably for boys as well. Secondary prevention uh, screening says the diagnostics of pre-cancer status and adequate treatment of these women. Um, uh, from these pre-cancer uh, diseases and uh, uh, tertiary um, prevention at uh, cancer treatment. In May 2018, the Director General of WHO called to uh, action to eliminate uh, cervical cancer. Why? Because for the first time, accumulating data and uh, the um, capacities, we can actually eliminate cervical cancer within this century. What is needed for that? We need certain actions to be taken. And these actions, uh, and uh, Professor Antela spoke about that, 70% coverage with vaccine, 90% coverage with uh, treatment, and uh, 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 the uh, 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 large percentage of mortality uh, decrease by 2030. And there are some difficulties that we come across because in the countries the situation varies. And here you can see the graph. Uh, we have selected a list of countries that have taken a part in the seminar on screening carried out by the agency. And these are the countries with which our group uh, works on different projects. And you can see the Russian Federation there and the correlation between um, incidence and mortality, um, 32 per 1,000, and uh, uh, mortality 12 uh, per 100,000. And uh, vaccination, is it expensive or not? Uh, allow to uh, quote um, 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 uh, our colleague, Valentin Rosovich, from the country office of WHO. When we had a seminar in Minsk on cervical cancer, he said the number of women dying from cancer is uh, uh, about 300. So will we talk about 300? We can imagine a Boeing that uh, uh, crashes every uh, single year. And that's in the country with a population 9.5 million. If we imagine a country larger than that, just imagine how many Boeings crash uh, there. And so this, will, this gives you an idea how feasible it is economically. That's a very simple comparison, but it works, and it's a good illustration. Here are some numbers, a diagram, rather, uh, uh, for the results and data uh, generated from the Maya, uh, Maya platform of Globaca. Uh, Globac, and uh, provided by the uh, European Regional WHO Presentable. Red is the mortality from cervical cancer in European countries, and green the post-Soviet space, uh, Russian-speaking countries, whatever you call these countries. You can see that after the 1990s, these lines began to move in very different directions. So this was about uh, cervical cancer. Now, um, anal cancer, that's quite a rare thing, much uh, rarer uh, than the cervical cancer. But there is an interesting trend here because uh, there is an increase. According to the data from the United States, we can trust. Mm, uh, anyway, that's uh, actually what I can present here over a long period of time of observation. They have been able to say that the increase uh, was about 3.3%, uh, new data 2.2%, that's the annual growth, annual growth um, of uh, annual. Uh, cancer. And there is a certain synergy between anal and cervical. 
um, uh, because there is also a transitory zone that uh, t uh, that is targeted by the um, HPV infection, as uh, with the cervical cancer for anal uh, um, uh, uh, cancer, it's necessary for the infection to be persistent, and uh, uh, um, cervical cancer that's mostly w younger women, anal mostly older women after 60, and it's uh, uh, very common with. Uh, 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 men. Uh, and uh, 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 etiologically, um, uh, rectal um, uh, cancer and anal cancer are different, but very often the data is summed up. If if we take the uh, factor risks of fact, uh, sorry risk factors for women, there was an interesting uh, study carried out in Costa Rica, where it became clear that among women under 29 years of age, there was a, a high level of anal and cervical infection, up to 30 percent, uh, uh, independently correlating with each other, and it appears that for all women. Uh, the cervical uh, 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 HPV was associated with a number of uh, sexual partners, but uh, for those women uh, who, sp who uh, informed about the anal contact, uh, they, they, there was also a number of uh, partners with whom they practiced anal sex. So they, as uh, women with um, um, anal uh, fissures, there was no correlation like that as for uh, men. Um, anal HPV is quite common, as, or uh, is quite often encountered, particularly uh, for men uh, practicing sex with men. And I had a chance to take part in the study associated with the diagnostics uh, for uh, hetero, uh, no, no, for um, uh, uh, men practicing different types of sex. And among the cohort that we studied, 16% of uh, negative uh, heterosexual sex men had uh, HPV infection in the um, 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 anal organ. So, uh, a HIV infected uh, have a 50% higher rate of um, HPV infection. As for women with um, um, uh, HIV, this correlation is about 30 percent. Now, and uh, ending this story, uh, uh, homosexual men, uh, with uh, this infection is very common, as well as uh, the pre-cancer diseases and regression, or rather progression here, uh, from pre-cancer anal uh, uh, lesions uh, to um, anal cancer is lower than in case of uh, the um, uh, cervical cancer. At present, uh, there are no um, recommendations concerning prevention or screening that could be done for the early diagnostics of anal cancer, uh, irrespective of the orientation, sexual orientation of men. Another interesting cancer is oropharyngeal. There is not much uh, data about that at all. Uh, we know that there is a certain pr proportion of that is caused by HPV, and that in 90 percent, it's H, uh, uh, APV 16 that causes it. And uh, uh, about um, 85,000 cases of um, oropharyngeal um, cancer, that's the data that we have. This is different from the numbers I have demonstrated earlier. And at present, we do not uh, have any clear data that um, HPV vaccination can help with the vaccination of uh, HPV oral infection. And we can see an increase of uh, the um, oropharyngeal cancer growth in in different countries. You can see the blue line that goes upstairs. This is HPV positive oropharyngeal uh, areas. And uh, the gray line, uh, it's um, HPV negative uh, oropharyngeal area. So data um, analyzed between 1988 and the year 2004 in Los Angeles and to other American states, it is obvious that the incidence is on the rise um, and the uh, uh, incidence with oropharyngeal uh, cancer about uh, the um, negative, HPV negative, is statistically lower. Uh, right, then, as for the forecast, uh, in the future, we can expect the line that goes down, the upper line. 
that goes down. That is the incidence of uh, cervical cancer. We expect it to grow down, while the um, uh, incidence of oropharyngeal uh, cancer uh, for men goes up and uh, uh, lower transparent for, uh, for, so for men up for and conclusions. HPV is uh, most common uh, CTI in infection and also uh, an agent uh, for the development of several cancers in humans. Uh, elimination of cervical cancer is possible, maybe during this century. And uh, uh, the strategies for the prevention of cervical cancer should uh, incorporate vaccination and uh, diagnostics, particularly in the uh, countries with low income. There must be population screening programs. So there are no effective screening programs for other types of cancer. And uh, um, 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 there is quite a big proportion of these cancers caused by HPV. And theoretically, theoretically, they can be prevented through vaccination, but we are not uh, absolutely sure about that. I also need to say that in this case, we need further studies. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I and why Dr. Isabel Hurt were here uh, prior to the Congress. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.